It but does it, give you more capacity. Sorry? It does give you more it capacity. It does give you more capacity. capacity. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, no, exactly. Exactly. So that's the, that's the difference here as well. Not in Galera, all the loads have the same data, right? Here, this, the, 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 the partitions do not have you know, the same data. They have a, each have a subset of data. Uh, so what happens then? Well, we sort, certainly can have uh, uh, failures, and and uh, and in this case, um, uh, we have a fire starting on this data node and on this data node, and that is um, uh, completely okay. Um, uh, we, you know, if this one fails, we still have a backup there, so to say. And we have another replica of our data here, so that's okay. So the cluster can continue to live here. Um, and, and then when you do uh, inserts and so on, as usual, um, uh, and then when you start up this data node, it will rejoin the cluster again and will only ask for what's changed since I crashed. Right? It will have a, um, like a global transaction ID it will send uh, uh, to the live node and say, give me the changes from, from my point when I crashed. Uh, the interesting thing is when, uh, when, when, when both nodes in a node group crashes, uh, the, um, then, uh, sorry, in one partition, when both nodes uh, crashes here, then you will actually end up with no cluster. Uh, the, the remainder of the uh, the other partitions will also fail them. And uh, that's because uh, NDB trades um, a consistency over availability. So if you would if you if you if you crash one node group or sorry one partition here and, and, and you would allow the other partitions to stay up, well there might be you know data in this partitioning referencing data in in a partition that is yeah, offline, is down, is crashed. And then you do updates on this data here, and you will have an inconsistent mess uh, after that. So that's, that's the reason. So it's a uh, cap theorem uh, thing, basically, why, why, why that happens. Um, um, and and, uh, and uh, uh, luckily, then, you know, statistically, it's, it's quite seldom that you have a complete crash of well, both nodes in a node group can happen. Uh, it's very rare. Okay. Uh, um, so I'm not sure if this comes out really that great. It's a bit small text, I would say. Um, to the left, I have tried to put in a, a very simple configuration file. Uh, where you basically, um, which is called config.ini, which is used by the management server to store the configuration of the cluster. And the configuration file contains of a number of groups and sections where you list the properties uh, of, your, uh, of your cluster. Okay? And you should never place the management servers, important, as it's on the same nodes as the, as the, the data nodes. And I don't even think you should pro put um, MySQL servers on the same nodes as the actual data nodes. So in the MySQL cluster case, you want to keep things kind of layered and separated. Uh, data nodes should run on eight cores or more and have SSDs. I uh, don't uh, recommend you to run uh, uh, MySQL cluster over, you know, on, on, on virtualized hardware. It's uh, unless you are giving it. Uh, kind of resources that are very similar to to your you know to a to a physical machine. Uh, I know people that have tried to put in a you know data node. They give it eight cores, but you know the the, the machine is then shared by ten other VMs, that, and uh, <coughs> it, it it's no it's not good for anyone. And then if you are you know uh, serious, ten gig Ethernet is really good. One gig is fine. Um, and so it's uh, the, you know it of course depends on the kind of nodes that you have. Right. There are a number of things that you uh, can control in MySQL cluster. So 
So uh, even though uh, uh, um, so, so the data nodes are, in fact, uh, by default, when you create a table and storing data in uh, the data node, it's stored in memory. And uh, 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 but uh, the in-memory storage is checkpointed, and the changes are redo log to disk. And there are a number of parameters here that are controlling uh, how much you write. So the only thing really I want to show you with this slide is that you can you can configure a lot the capabilities or, or um, characteristics of the of the data nodes uh, depending on what kind of uh, hardware. Uh, that you have, right? And uh, if you, you know, if you, for example, would increase the speed in which you checkpoint your data, right? If you checkpoint fast, then you have uh, usually a, a fast, a shorter redo log. So in case of a crash, you would have a, a faster recovery time. Um, and there are some 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 uh, some metrics that you can get from. Uh, from uh, from inside uh, Mesu cluster with regarding to you know uh, how uh, nodes have been restarted and, and you can get you know how long time it's spent in the restart how long of this time was then spent on rebuilding indexes and so on right so so you can get a lot of data here and based on this data then. There is actually possible then to go in and say, Kish, we're spending a little bit much on the index rebuild. So why not uh, increase the number of, of uh, index build threads uh, when the data node is recovering? That's uh, completely possible to do then, right? And here is a little short graph so showing that in, 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 in NDB 7.3, it took this much time to recover, uh, you, know, you know, but with the same data set on 7.4, the time is, you know, cut in more than half. So it's been significant improvement in the in the latest MySQL cluster releases uh, or NDB cluster releases regarding uh, performance of of, of uh, node recovery. And then you typically, you know, if you are a database administrator of all of this or have some interest, then you would like to know roughly how much is being written to, um, you know, to disk. You know, how much of how much, uh, how, how much data are the nodes checkpointing, right? How much node data is, the, is written into the redo log all the time? And all these uh, numbers uh, can then be used to further tune the, the size of your redo logs or, or um, the way, that, you know, how fast you, you checkpoint your nodes and so on, right? Then there are also other things that you can see here. I'm going through a bit of a dry section here right now. I know it's been lighting up a little bit shortly. <laughs> I just want to show you some, some of what I think is interesting uh, metrics here that you can get out of, or from, from, the, uh, from the NDB cluster. And, and, and you can see you know, how many uh, uh, bytes and rows that are allocated uh, for for particular tables and how they are distributed. And this is very useful to understand, you know, do we have an evenly distributed uh, platform, right? Or do we have more load shifted towards, you know, one, sec one set of nodes or, you know, ideally it should be, of course, evenly distributed across the cluster. And I said that auto partitioning was automatic, it was based on the primary key. But you as a user can actually influence the partitioning yourself as well. Um, so it is possible to, to, to adjust the partitioning. And then these things come, becomes more important to understand are the requests landing on, you know, did I partition wrong, basically? That's the question. Or did we choose a bad partitioning key? <coughs> mm. Sharding, sounds familiar? Uh, so, so, so the... So, so you can say that the NDB cluster, um, the, the data nodes here with the, the, the different silos, they're like shards. But the sharding is automatic based on the primary key across these silos. And then 
uh, you can inflict, you can, you can, you can uh, change that so you can actually create a table where you say that I want to partition it this way and it will be done partitioned that way and sharded, sharded that way. Okay, uh, so some other uh, just brief features of, 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 of MySQL cluster and the cluster. Uh, it's a transactional um, storage engine, uh, read committed isolation level, uh, and, and, and data is stored in memory. Uh, that's by default, uh, but uh, it's the checkpoint that we do. You can also create disk data tables if you have, for example, so, so, so the, the in-memory tables are the ones that are used for the high-performance parts, right, where you need to have fast access. And then you can also have disk data tables uh, for uh, archive storage, for example, where you, where you just simply you know, dump down the data and it will be stored on disk. You, may have more disks than you have RAM. Uh, and then um, the, the non-indexed data uh, yeah, of, the, of the table will be stored on disk. The indexed data will still be stored in, in RAM, so it will be reasonably efficient to, to fetch it. But uh, yeah, in general, the disk data tables are not that, that performing. It cannot be compared to to doing a large uh, scan on, on InnoDB where the data is on, on, uh, on disk, then InnoDB would be much faster. There would be quite a lot of random IMO on the disk data tables, I'm afraid. Uh, there is support for foreign keys, but uh, you know, for performance reasons, if you can avoid it, then I recommend that you don't use it. GSM full, uh, G, um, GIS and full text uh, search is not supported. This area. Uh, some other things that are good to know is that the MySQL server, if you're using the MySQL server as a way of accessing the data, is that it stores locally the views and the triggers and routines and events and, and, and grants. Um, so if you add a new, uh, if you connect a new MySQL server to the plus to the MDB to the data nodes. Then you need to provision these MySQL servers with, um, yeah, with, the, with the views, the, the, the triggers, the routines, uh, and grants uh, that you need to have. And the good thing is that um, you, it's, it's completely uh, um, master set up, so you can write to any node that you want at any given time. Uh, so. Um, um, uh, you don't need to think about any read write uh, splitting. And as I said, you can then add data loads of, uh, online, and you can, uh, the, the max limitation on the number of data loads you can have is 48, right? So uh, I think Singa uh, and some other, and Lisa as well, are, are maxing out on these levels. Um, you can then also add uh, API nodes online, you can replicate cluster to cluster, you can do online alter table uh, commands uh, online, so you can add more columns uh, to your table, uh, you can add indexes online. Uh, dropping the columns would however be in uh, copying all the table and you really want to be uh, um, uh, with that. Um, and uh, if you know that uh, I said that the data is stored in memory, okay, it's replicated to, to uh, so it's always stored in two nodes. Um, and, uh, and what happens then if you have a classic failure? Well, will I lose any data? Yes, you will. You will lose up to uh, one second of, of data. So you should probably run this with uh, you know, the, on the MySQL server, you can also run with a binary log zone, right? So you can do uh, point in time recovery. Uh, but uh, if you set uh, a parameter called time between global checkpoints to 1000, it's very much similar as you would run a single DB instance with the you know, DB flush transaction log equal to, right? Uh, 